Amen. Amen. Are you happy to be in the house of God this morning? No, you don't sound. I think you are thinking whether you are happy or not. David said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. It's always a happy moment to come. We live in his presence, so we're not coming to his presence. We are coming jointly to celebrate in his presence. Okay? So we're not coming into his presence. We don't come into what we live in. All right? His presence is tabernacled in us. Says in those days, I will live in them. I will walk in them. Not with them first. But I will walk in them. I believe that's what scripture says. That as you walk, the Lord is walking. So it's always a great pleasure to come into the house of the Lord. To come and join up together. We are the house of the Lord, not this building. So we come and you bring that house, I bring this house. We come and join up together. Scripture says we are being built up a dwelling place for God by his spirit. Okay? So it's not the house of the Lord is not this building. Please get it right. Asema nyumba ya Bwana. Pana nyumba ya Bwana ni wewe. All right? This is where nyumba nyumba za Bwana zinakutana. For that moment, this building has a privilege of hosting the carriers of God. Amen. Wow, I want to appreciate the couple of men of God and women of God with us here today. My brother, Bishop George Kennedy said I shouldn't say much, so I'll leave it at that. He has been with us, but in the other glory, he has not been to this. No, he was here when there was nothing. There was just coffee and some maize. And we spoke, him and some other men of God. And we spoke, and we spoke, and we trusted God. And today, it's taken shape. It's taken shape. From strength to strength. From glory to glory. Amen. So if you're coming around just now, don't think this is how it has always been. It's been a process. It's been a journey. We also have pastors here. So glad that you could join us today. Thank you. They're the parents of team our keyboard is here. Amen. Why don't you appreciate the servants of God? Amen. All right. I want us to get into the word. Hmm. Hmm. As we've been made to understand, we are in a season after the conference. 
we started a new year. Spiritual people don't wait for the chronological year. Sema unangoja kuruka mwaka. God does not go by the calendar year. So when the man of God came, Bishop was here, Bishop Likavo, we had a wonderful time. And he gave us a word that we need to, the Lord has given us a land, we need to build power concentration for the land. Power concentration. I told you scripture says that the God rules by his power forever. You need power to rule. That's why even the president is usually given that sword as a symbol of transfer of power. You need power to rule. A powerless believer cannot rule. It says through the greatness of your power shall your enemies be submitted to you. Through the greatness of your power shall your enemies be submitted to you. The enemies of God who are in this territory will not submit to us without the greatness of God's power being manifest through us. All right? That's why we call the fast for 21 days only. To get us started, we say that's a starter course. That word by Bishop was confirmed by another pastor was here. Said in the next one year, the Lord wants to do something marvelous in this ministry. It's critical for this ministry. The next one year. And we said when the Lord speaks... There's abundance of grace to perform that which he has spoken. Our role is to position ourselves. Joshua told them, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Sanctify yourself. Consecrate yourselves. For tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. The Lord wants to do wonders. He has already spoken. He says, I am the Lord who speaks in righteousness. The word has gone out of his mouth in righteousness. It will not return. It will not return void. It will not return void. Unless the people to whom it came become careless with the word. Timothy was told according to the prophecies that have gone forth. That you may wage a good warfare. Hata kama ni wewe, ungesikia kwamba kuna watu wanakuja kukubandua, kukutoa kwa nyumba yako pale umekaa vizuri. You not go without a fight. If you're a man or a woman worth you, worth some salt. Utajiami. Hata kama ni mawe ukonayo tu. So the enemy will not go without a fight. That's why it's contending for the land. It says, I've given you Sihon the king. Now possess, begin to possess the land and contend with him in battle. Contend. He has given, but ours is to contend. 
Now, if the ones who are supposed to contend don't rise up to contend, the word will not come to fulfillment. And you blame the bishop, you blame the pastor, you said, no, they are not true prophets. But you didn't run with the word. You didn't position yourself. So the season of prayer and fasting we are having up to about around November 25th is just to start getting ourselves in the frame of this contention that the Lord may start pouring in us and through us. Amen. For those who have been able to fast and pray, I trust the Lord is giving you grace, helping you. For those who have been feasting, we trust that you take advantage of the grace in this coming week and get in line. Amen? There are dimensions of God you can't, you can't see, you can't experience if you're always on a full stomach. Guys would rather things go so wrong with them than set aside their comfort. Job said, I've treasured your word more than my necessary food. I've treasured your instruction more than my convenience, more than my comfort. When you start treasuring God's instruction, because that's what it is, Bishop said on the first day, he said obedience to instruction releases the blessings of God. But you take casually. What comes from here? I would advise you find a place where you can take the word seriously because people will progress and you remain in the same place and you think it's warfare no it's not warfare obedience to instruction so we continue this coming week and the week after amen Let's encourage each other. We don't say this because it's easy. There's grace, yes. But even with the grace, it's not easy to pass on a plate. Like yesterday morning, I woke up and my son had like six, five mandazis. Okay, they're small ones. Don't think he's... But he had a collection there and he was working on them and I'm drinking my water. <laughs> and you say their glories I'm pursuing. There are things in God that I'm pursuing. That I'm willing to put aside the fish and you've been eating fish all these years. How much has it helped you? Apart from sometimes adding your weight. How much more? Apart from helping you to, to function. How much more? So we're not saying you leave it for a year. No. It's just a few days. We started on Monday. Now seven days are gone. Before you know. 21 days will be gone and you come out fitter. 
You come out fat in the inner man. Strengthen. Building capacity. I told you scripture says. He told them I have many things to say to you. But you cannot yet bear them. John 16, 12. I have many things to say to you. And saying is not the way I'm talking. I have many things to reveal to you. I want to bring you into many things. But you cannot yet bear them. Your capacity tell your neighbor build capacity. Build capacity. Guys, go to the gym to build capacity. Hmm? They build capacity. Fasting and prayer is a spiritual gym. We build capacity. That greatness of power will not flow. I can assure you. You can have some little power, little. If you make it your career to be on a full stomach the whole year. We said we celebrate food, food is good. But Ecclesiastes he says, blessed are you all land. When your kings eat in due season. We are kings. When your kings eat in due season. Let me read that for you. Ecclesiastes. Chapter 10. In due season. Says there's a time and a season for everything under the face of the earth, under the sun. 1017 Ecclesiastes, this is says, Blessed are thou, O land, when your king is a son of nobles. We are royal priesthood, we are sons of the most noble God. All right? Then he says, and your princes eat in due season for strength and not for drunkenness. You know, you can eat for strength. For what you need to keep you going. But you can also get to us gluttony. Hmm? Kikau na kana ugali. Kubwa zaidi ya kichwa yangu. So let's, let's beware of the season that we are in. And let's show up accordingly, Okay. love you but I must tell you what we need to do I want you to be a pastor of people who are carriers of God the way it was being said up here carriers of God who can demonstrate what they believe That you don't have to be calling the pastor when you're in your estate, when you're in the market, at the marketplace. By the time pastor comes from town to Kiambu, and yet you are a carrier of the same Holy Ghost that the pastor carries. So we want to raise people. Who can demonstrate. Says with great power. They gave witness of the resurrection of Christ.
But great power comes at a cost. It's not a word we like. Say all by grace. Great power comes at a cost. Now the choice is yours. If you're satisfied with the power you have, then you make choices that are aligned with that. But I know there's a stirring up in this house. Amen? I know there's a stirring up. The enemy that is holding this land, this community, this territory, will not yield without a great fight. But the good news is our God rules over all. We are not fighting for victory. We are fighting to enforce. We enforce us. He's given us the land. He has given. He can't give what he doesn't have. But there's an imposter. Like Simon the sorcerer. Who subdued the city. Pretending that it was a great power of God. Until Philip showed up. With a real deal. Darkness cannot stand. In the presence of the light. The brightness. Because sometimes you can be scared. Saying, oh, the principalities. Oh, they We respect the enemy. But we know who we are in God. All right? Don't underestimate the enemy. Respect the enemy. But... Know, above all, know who you are in God. That helps you to put the enemy in his place. You have proper perspective. I want to talk this morning about the hidden power of prayer and fasting. The hidden power of prayer and fasting. To teach a lot of these are borrowed from a, a book by Pastor Mahesh Chavda. It's a great man. I was telling some guys here he is. He's actually has his roots in Kenya. That man has been so used of God. May not have heard of him, but he's a great man. If you can look for that book, look for it and read. The Hidden Power of Prayer and Fasting. Luke 5 from 34. Luke 5 verse 34. Mm hmm. Uh, go, start from 33. Hmm. And they say to him, why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers? So it's always prayer and fasting. Not just fasting alone. That, that's something else. If you fast, you must pray so that you don't open up yourself to influences that are not of God. Okay? So if you fast, make a habit of praying. It's dangerous to fast without prayer. 
And likewise, the disciples of the Pharisees, but you as eat and drink. Next verse. And he said unto them, Can ye make the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. Now these are part of those days. We are in those days. The bridegroom is seated at the right hand of the Father. We are in those days. Okay? I looked up David, the king. Interesting, interestingly, we say a lot about David, the king. Talk about his psalms. But very little is said about his discipline of prayer and fasting. Psalm 69 verse 10. Mm -hmm. When I wept and chastened my soul, humbled my soul with fasting, that was to my reproach. Let's go to Psalm 35 verse 13. Mm -hmm. Psalm 35 verse 13. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting. That's David speaking. Psalm 109 verse 24. My knees are weak through fasting. My flesh fails of fatness. My flesh is failing of fatness. I can feel some kilos going out. But there's some kilos being added in the inner man. Hmm? Sometimes you can feel a bit of weakness. But I tell you the strength. Because the pipelines are cleaned. They are opened. There's a flow from God. Amen. So that was David. David. He was not only a man of the word. David so loved the word. If you go to Psalm 119, you find. Verse 14 says, I treasure your word more than I rejoice at your word as one who has found great treasure. Says, I prevent the night watches to meditate on your word. Now I can connect. Why David was such a mighty man and he also raised such mighty warriors. The spirit and the word. The spirit and the word. He knew how to lay hold of God but he also dwelt in the word. So fasting is an extremely important aspect of the New Testament lifestyle of the end time church. Fasting is the equivalent of an athlete work, uh, working out at the gym. At times when I used to go to the gym at 5 a.m. in the morning. So maybe I would wake up at 4, pray until 5, then I'm out. To the gym 
The only problem is I was giving the gym more time than I was. Because it would take one and a half hours to have a proper workout. Kwa na jenga misuli, kishika hivi unasikia hiko kitu. Body. But the inner man, Our wrestling is not with flesh and blood, so body will not help a lot. In matters kingdom, we are not saying don't go to the gym. He says bodily exercise profits little. Go collect the little. But godliness, training in godliness is profitable for all things. Including that which body can handle. For all things. Body is only profitable for some things. So fasting is that equivalent. Fasting helps to release the power of the spirit in our lives. It doesn't necessarily earn you more grace from God. But it facilitates the freer flow of the Holy Spirit through you God wants to flow through you through your vessel and my brother was leading the prayer here he was talking about compassion having the feel of the heart of God for this community that when you see guys stumbling drunk Was it, uh, uh, was it, who was this guy? Who says, there go I, but for the grace of God. When he saw a guy in the trench, in the siwa, whatever. A guy was so drunk. It says, the only difference between that guy and me is the grace of God. That you can feel for them. When you hear those neighbors fighting. Eh? Kama Kosovo. He used to say Kosovo. Or Gaza. It's not funny but. It's a war zone. There's no peace. Do you feel for them? That you, you've come into the light and yet you've kept the light to yourself. Because when you don't have power, when this thing is not stirring in you, you don't feel anything. There's a greater purpose. Jesus said, for this I am come to this moment. Father, glorify yourself. Why are you come to this moment? There are people in your workplace who are this close, some of them to suicide, you would not know. Some of them are so oppressed. And God has put you there as a contact point for the manifestation of his love, of his grace. But because we shun the gym, prayer, and fasting, the flow of the Spirit through you is minimized. So you can be this close with somebody who is that close to destruction. And yet their only hope might be you. But because of a lack of sensitivity, they pass on. Can I tell you something? That is most scary. 
The Lord will hold you accountable. There's a day of accounting. You say, no, I didn't know. It's your business to know. Says when he, the spirit comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will show you things to come. Why is it that he's not showing us? I mean, how can the devil snatch somebody right under my nose? With all this Holy Ghost. So it facilitates a freer flow of the Holy Spirit. Through you, through us. By dissolving and removing all the junk in your life. You've been feasting on fast food. So there's a lot of junk that requires you to get into the gym so that there's a free flow. The guys who are dealing with sometimes with lifestyle diseases you would find there are issues that are clogging the no more flow of things. So why do we fast? We f number one, we fast in obedience to God's word. Fasting is deeply embedded in God's word. It's a tool of, of overcoming leaders in both the Old and New Testament. You can read Joel 2.12. 2 Corinthians 6, 4 to 6, Paul said in fastings often, not rarely, in fastings often, let's go to 2 Corinthians since we are in Sunday school, let's learn, lest you say I'm um, putting words where they're not, 2 Corinthians 6 from verse 4. Hmm. But in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments. I don't know which ones you can identify with there. In tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings. I wonder guys who are carrying aprons or clothes from his body and there was such transmission of power. Today we read about it and it looks like this thing that is so outside the realm of possibility. And yet the glory is supposed to be greater as we go. Number two, we fast to humble ourselves before God and obtain his grace and power. If you want power and grace from God, then you have to humble yourselves. James 4.10 Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will lift you up. So we fast to humble ourselves. Number three, we fast to overcome temptations in areas that keep us from moving into God's power. We fast to overcome temptations in areas that keep us from moving into God's power. If the anointing is not flowing freely through you, that is a good sign that you need to fast and pray. It's time to clear the channels so God's spirit can flow through you. Number four, we fast to be purified from sin and to help others become purified as well. Number 
since we said this is Sunday school, unless you are taking your notes on your phone, it's important to carry something to write. All right? Since we are coming to learn, unless you're a genius, you can absorb all this and remember it word for word. It's always important. We used to be with believers in college. When you ask them, how was the service? It's powerful. So you ask them, what does powerful mean? They can't break it down. My was in some way, but the service is quite powerful. So what is powerful? That you can take away things that you can go and chew on. All right? That's how we progress. Sisi nema tumekuja. Wala kutumbuizwa. We've come to learn. Okay? Don't get offended. Just, I'm trying to help you. I mean, I've been in this kingdom for quite some time. <laughs> More than a quarter century. So I know a few things. Yesterday I was just studying scripture. In the morning, I rested well, woke up just around a few minutes to eight. On Saturday, sometimes I sleep a, a little bit more. Because during the week, I'm awake at some hours. So, I try to balance a bit. So at eight, I started reading the Bible. I was just reading. Then I had my notebook and a pen there. Then the Spirit started just bringing things. I think I was writing. I was in there about until about 10.30. In fact, I only left because I had to go meet with a client somewhere. But I was feeling so bad because there was a flow. So you might be here and maybe he wants to give you a flow that might help you in the days to come. But you don't have anywhere to write down. And I realized the more I wrote, the more I kept pouring. But if it only remained here, I, it would not, the tap would have just closed within a few minutes. So please make a point. Make a point. Number four, we first to be purified from sin. Uh, okay, we've said that. So when you're dealing with besetting or entangling sins that seem to be popping up again and again, you need to get into fasting. Maybe unasumbuliwa na wadada. Ama unasumbuliwa na wandugu. You can't keep yourself pure. Fasting is a good place to deal with those things. Izo my feelings in kufanya when the outside the Bible says the Lord has called us to sanctification, to holiness. Why is it that you, you are finding yourself always wanting to walk contrary to the mind of God as revealed in the word? It's time to get into fasting. Don't say it's my weakness. I mean, I have a weakness for ladies. Abana, there's no such thing. That, those are just excuses. You don't want to get in the gym and get helped. Fasting is a good place. You quiet the flesh. Subdue it. Bring it under. Paul says, I beat my body. I bring it under. Or if you're dealing with gluttony, you can't, you can't resist food. Ado kienda kwa wenyewe hauna. They call it what? 
decorum eh mas mengi hapo kwa wenyewe lakini chapati umepitisha kama tano na kuna wengine cause you just there's something inside you Scripture says a man who has no control over his spirit is like a city whose walls are broken down. That you have no control over your spirit. What it wants, it gets. You can't be a carrier of power when that is you. The secret is here fasting and praying number 5 we fast to become weak before god so his power can be strong fasting is the choice for god and against the flesh when you fast you're making a conscious inward choice demonstrated by an outward act that you want god's power to flow through you not your own number 6 We fast to obtain God's support in order to accomplish his will. We fast to obtain God's support in order to accomplish his will. Isn't it interesting? Says that when Christ comes in, the first thing the spirit does is to lead him into the wilderness. Alimpeleka gym kwanza fasting and praying 40 days as we just at 21 about una kwepa kwepa says it is enough for the servant to be like his master Acts 13:3 to 4 Mhm Acts 13:3 to 4 please Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them they sent them away So being sent out by the Holy Spirit they went down to Seleucia and from there they sailed to Cyprus Acts 14:23 So when they had appointed elders in every church and prayed with fasting so even appointing elders don't appoint at the restaurant hmm? at KFC when we're dealing with enjoying ourselves so you can appoint some elders who can be a pain a hindrance to the work says when they had appointed elders in every church and prayed with fasting they commended them to the lord in whom they believed number 7 we fast in times of crisis men have always turned to god in prayer and fasting in times of crisis esther 4:15 The book of Esther 4:15 to 16. Mm-hmm. The Nessa told them to reply to Mordecai. Go gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me, neither eat nor drink for 3 days, night or day. This is serious. told you I tried to neither eat nor drink for four days and I almost collapsed <laughs> hey. but the lord helped me and sometimes you can you can see the hunger you can see the desire i 
my mates and I will fast likewise. And so I'll go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Such determination. Fixation of focus in the mind. Sometimes the crisis, no, stay there, please. The crisis doesn't go away because in the midst of a crisis, we unaendelea tu kumonya kama kawaida. Eh? Unameza tu. Crisis. You are busy interpreting the crisis, analyzing, which is fine. But those are moments when you're losing job after job. You get this one, you lose. You get the other one, you lose. Something is not right. While he says they proceed from strength to strength, those who appear before him, you are proceeding from crisis to crisis. It's indeed time to use this tool. Maybe it's an affliction from the enemy. I'm just saying maybe. So they don't see the devil behind everything. But his major occupation is to resist the saints. To frustrate, to hinder the saints of God. But when you get into this prayer and fasting. He doesn't like it when we get into fasting. He likes it when our hands are always around the table. To nafinya finya vitu. He likes it. He knows you can shout here about power. But the channels are clogged. Don't get me wrong. Akatia, we are not fasting. We enjoy meals. We enjoy food. Food is good. Okay? Sema yo kanisa unataka kutuhua na fasting. Na kutumaliza. No. We just want you to get in, into your own. The things that God has laid up for you. told you about Philip and we said before Philip was from the catering department the guys who were dealing with food but Philip went down to Samaria hey, that guy impresses me and I get to heaven if I remember yeah look for him <laughs> eh? a guy from the ushering department goes down to Numberi and is so carrying God that in that block that he stays, start, things start changing. There's an atmosphere. Wala walikuwa na kwa zana wanapigana kila siku. There's an atmosphere. That you get into your workplace, there's an atmosphere. Amen. A secret is in prayer and fasting. Number seven. Number eight. Okay. We fast when seeking God's direction. Ezra 8, 21 to 23. When you need God's direction, when you're confused about which way to go, don't go to the motivational speaker. I'm trying to find my purpose in life. <laughs> One was told, is it that there's no God in Israel? That you've gone to consult Baal. And he was told, you not come down from that bed.
Is there no balm in Gilead? Ezra. Then I proclaim a fast there. And these guys are in what we call the Old Testament. Those are books of the Bible. They're not really the Old Testament, but fine. That's for another day. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river Ahava that we might humble ourselves. We say fasting is a way of humbling yourself before God to seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and our possessions. There's always a right way. Are you in the right way? leave that one. For as a shame to request of the king an escort of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road because we had spoken to the king saying the hand of our God is upon all those for good who seek him but his power and his wrath is against all those who forsake him. That he was ashamed to ask for help from the king because he had, he had testified about their God. That is a provider. That is a sustainer. That is a deliverer. You say you trust God, but when you are in a crisis, the first thing you're remembering is that uncle of yours who can sort you out and you run. The other day I was in a crisis and I I learned when but the Bible says, put not your trust in princes. It's better to trust in the Lord than in princes. I had two guys who are loaded men who I knew for sure they can give me the money I was looking for. So I went to the first one and he tells me, hey, my brother I would really like to help, but I'm in a space. Business, the dollar, that, that. I can't do it at this moment. I felt so disappointed. I went to the second one. Said, oh, we are so stretched. We have payments outside that we have not collected. We are really squeezing. I can't help you. Didn't give me even 50K. I needed about 800,000. Those are guys who are millionaires. Not in Kenya shillings. And I learned it is better to trust in the Lord than in princes. He says, I had told them that our God is the saving strength of his anointed. It's him who sends us help from Zion, from the sanctuary. That is a very present help in trouble. So he says, no, Lord, I will not go to the king. You are the great king over all the earth. We come to you. That king is, even that king is under you. Scripture says, give us help in trouble. For vain is the help of man. Give us help in trouble. Vain is the help of men. Men might be well wishing, well intentioned, but they have limitations. As I learned, sadly so. And the Lord touched another guy who had our money for 18 months. That guy. Of what he owed us, the most he was paying us at any one time is 100K. Cause he says, no, let's not have a contest. Let's meet. Let's settle this thing. The guy wrote us a check for 511,000 that day. For 18 months. That was the time of the Rema feast. I was annoyed. I was getting late because I needed to take care of that thing. 
gave me a check and gives me a check for the same bank so that's ready cash unaweka hivi unatoa sorted out the issue and we had some change such is our god number 9 we fast for understanding and divine revelation as believers we need more than direction we need revelation and understanding of certain matters situations or truths in the bible quickly isaiah 58 and look at the benefits of fasting briefly and then we we pray mm-hmm. isaiah 58 from verse 1 says cry aloud spare not lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their god they ask of me the ordinances of justice they take delight in approaching to god wherefore have we fasted say they and thou seest not wherefore have we afflicted our soul and thou takest no knowledge behold in the day of your fast you find pleasure and exalt all your labors behold you fast for strife and debate this is not for strife this is not for contest and to smite with the feast of wickedness you shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high is it such a fast that i have chosen verse 5 a day for a man to afflict his soul so there's a fast that the lord has chosen so that tells you fasting is of god all right a day f- okay Is not this a fast that I've chosen to lose the bands of wickedness to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke is it not to deal your bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house when you see the naked that you cover him and that you hide not yourself from your own flesh Then shall your light was eight break forth as a morning and your health shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before thee the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard then you shall call and the Lord shall answer you shall cry and he shall say here I am so the benefits number 1 revelation I've gotten quite some revelation in this this few days understanding of the word even places where I used to read and just get nothing ilikuwa ni kama story you're starting to see things because the pipelines are being unclogged number 2 healing and holy, wholeness says your health shall spring forth speedily we talked about the benefits of fasting from a health point of view you give your body systems a break okay i sometimes deal with machines in my work and there's what they say is downtime for machines even the machines don't run 24/7 365 days there's downtime when they give them a break so even in your machine your system needs to get breaks sometimes you have issues because the system is always under pressure pressure of food 
unaisindilia kila siku unasindilia patia mitambo nafasi ipumue na ujenge nafsi yako eat for strength not for excess for drunkenness number 3 says your righteousness shall go before you your alignment with god becomes very clear when you pray and fast number 4 you get the presence the shekinah glory of god the manifest glory of god number 5 you have answered prayers says verse 9 you shall call and the lord shall answer we shall cry and he shall say here i am number 6 continual guidance says the lord shall go before you continual guidance number 7 contentment contentment okay actually the guidance is in verse 11 says and the lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy your soul in drought and make fat your bones and you shall be like a watered garden hey just from missing some food to pray to seek the lord you shall be like a watered garden not watered by men watered by god when the fountain of living waters waters you number 8 refreshing says and you shall be like a spring of waters of water whose waters fail not number 9 strength says though our outward man is perishing our inner man is renewed daily there's a renewing there's a strengthening I can feel it in my praying. I can feel it. The strength. Not seen food the last 6 days. Today is the 7th. But I'm feeling strong. The strength. Sometimes you think you you die nasikia kichwa inauma kidogo narudi kwa msosi the body is so speaking to you is so addicted to food that when it doesn't get oh it speaks it throws tantrums in term, in forms of headaches some funny feelings and you know with children we don't respond to tantrums if you respond to tantrums you will always be under manipulation and control the kid you tell them sit there until you quiet down then we'll speak we don't speak by throwing things lash and that's the way the body behaves kinyima kidogo inapiga nduru nasia kichwa sema eh hey, kichwa vile inauma wacha ni 
Haya ni tafute tafute chapati. Nitulize. Na katika hiyo kutuliza unatuliza ile neema ambayo ilikuwa ikuje kwako. Unapoesha ule moto ambao Bwana alikuwa anakuletea unanyamazisha. And you never go beyond that. If you cannot master your appetite, you never be anything meaningful for God. I can tell you and maybe anything meaningful for yourself. Says if you are a man given to appetite, put a knife in your throat. There are men who are given to appetite. Given. Instead of giving yourself to the Lord, you've given yourself to appetite. Harufu ya mandazi ya Yesu kukupita. Na bwana bwana wacha nitafunga kuanzia kesho. Wacha nisulikie hii kwanza. Like iso for a morsel of bread, just bread, bread. The guy laid down what had eternal consequence and impact and grabbed what was for temporal satisfaction. Ndug Moses, ana ukifika mbinguni. Unaoneshwa yale ambao ulikuwa. Bwana alikuwa ameazimia kutenda kupitia wewe. Lakini kwa sababu ya mlo There are those who slip through your fingers into hell into godless eternity. Because you couldn't exercise yourself to godliness. You ran away from the gym. Says afterwards when he came he could not obtain repentance even though he sought it with bitter crying. The Lord doesn't respect those who don't respect what he has laid in them. Says he despised. Let none be in you who is profane and godless like Esau. So don't let the tantrums in your body make you to get off your consecration. All right? is abundance of grace. Yes. So I was telling you if you're used to one meal in the evening, here one meal, ukula jioni. Wacha tumbo ikae bila for three days. Just drink stuff. There's a quieting that comes. it will break you out of oh, stuff number 10 work that endures like an ever flowing spring says like a spring of waters like spring of water whose waters fail not number 11 which is in verse 12 and they shall they that be of thee shall build the old west places shall raise up the foundation of many generations and it shall be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of paths to dwell in so number 11 is rise raising of future generations number 12 is restoration amen those are the benefits of fasting